Okay, this video is gonna be about what you guys have been up to during lockdown. I'm just gonna, cause there's so much, I haven't really got time to tell you what I've been doing, but um, that's now finished behind. I'm really pleased with it. Looks really cool. I'm now in the process of starting to make some furniture for it, um, which I'll obviously be doing videos of shortly as I make it. First thing's gonna be a table, which I'm pretty excited about. It's gonna be a project, something different. So it's a resin table, but the difference is it's some really old shabby elm. Uh, I'll show you on the screen. If you follow my channel, you would have seen me. Um, you can go back and check the videos on this elm that I discovered at the wood yard, all rotten. I've jet washed it, um, planed it, tried to kill the bugs by baking it in a small oven I made, um, small kiln. So that's coming next, and that's going to be my first outdoor resin table. Arguably, it'll be undercover, but it will be, uh, you know, exposed to the elements. I get asked by so many people about um, outdoor tables, so I want to do one as a test. It's going to be a massive deep pour as well. Uh, so that's what's coming up um so yeah finish that let's get on to your videos now okay now onto your pictures uh first up jeremy fisher uh he says my name's jeremy from jeremy's wood shop i am 14 14 um and i've just completed my first english walnut coffee table river coffee table now on to making the base awesome jeremy that is a bloody good effort that looks fantastic I'm not sure where you're from. Okay, next up is Jim C. Um, this is something definitely different. Um, he said, here's a different take on a river table. Some cheap ply from a DIY stop shop in the UK. Um, he says, pretty good if you don't mind uh, searching through the stacks, you can get some good ones. He's designed this on F Fusion 360 and he's cut this out on his home CNC. What I find quite amazing about this is it looks like it's laminated ply, but he's saying it's glass cast three for the white surface and then glass cast 50 inside where I guess the Fusion 360 has cut out the 3D river. Very interesting. I would imagine there's quite a lot of work gone into just the white surface alone to get that all polished and lovely. Nice one, Jim. Okay, so next video is James Clancy. Um, he's showing a couple of things here. So this is a Christmas ornament that he makes during the season, but he said he thought he'd jump right in. I guess he's doing it during lockdown. He's all the way from, where is he? From Long Island in New York, so awesome. And then there's also a couple of pictures he said he's just sent for me, but it's cool for me to show. These are really good. So in one of my builds, I made some plywood angle clamps when I was doing uh, very large walk-in wardrobes with ply and I had a problem with falling over. But I was clamping them on with um, like a regular clamp. Jim's actually gone ahead, sorry, James has gone ahead, done like a little thumb lock on there. So if you look here and it looks like he's using a load of Rui stuff. Nice one, really good idea. I might take you up on that little thumb lock with a T-slot. Okay, next one up is JD. I think he's in France because he goes on to say he's giving these gifts to neighbours because they can't visit um, their new grandchild in Paris. So I'm guessing he's in France. He said this is um, local wood uh, from his local forest where he lives mostly. Walnut, birch, olive and oak. But there's also a little bit of purple heart and he tried resin for the first time inspired by me. That's really nice. It looks awesome. I really like the resin as well. It's very very kind of organic. Um, he's got some tea, tea light kind of holders and some kitchen boards. Really nice. Anyone would be pleased to get that resin piece. It looks awesome, JD. Well done. Next up is from Chris Starkin. He sent us like a 3D model. He couldn't finish his project. So this is some of the components. Thanks for sending. We get a rough idea of what's going on here. I'll try and put the 3D model up so we can have a look. Scan through. Nice one, Chris. Hope you're hanging out well there uh, in the lockdown. Shame you couldn't finish your project before it all happened. Okay, next up is from Cameron. Um, he said he's been a patron for over a year and watching all my videos. Thanks a lot, man, really appreciate it. He's been watching the videos and doing some resin pours. He said he was gonna send me some pictures anyway uh, for some input or feedback. Uh, these look really good. I think you're on the right track. You just, I can't see anything wrong with them. They look great. I love the finishes. You're using Odie's oil. Um, he says he's got to screw the legs on just with the, you know, the threaded inserts, I'm assuming. Um, but everything you're doing looks really good there, Carmen. I keep up the good work. He says he's also making a dining table at the moment, which he expects to take two or three weeks. I think that's probably reasonable. It takes about, I don't know, a day or so to do a resin pour, two days to prepare the wood, five to six days, depending on the temperature for it to cure, then let it settle for another five days or so. Then you've got to start your sanding process, finishing is another two or three days. And if you're gonna make your legs as well, it's probably a bit more. So spot on, I really like it, it looks great. So next up, Paul Beverly. He says um, he's a food retail manager, so busier than ever. That's what I've heard on the news, actually. The food has gone off the hook. High Street's gone down the pan. Um, anyway, so it's his hobby, uh, woodworking. He was inspired by one of the videos. He's one of my patrons as well. So again, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, 
He's inspired by my bar top video, which went on Patreon, which is all fully glass that I made for a client. So what he's done here is he's made his own router sled out of bits, which is pretty impressive because I can see what they're made of. That's very cool. Uh, he's milled this up for his wife. Um, it's going to be a bar. And what he's going to do, he's going to order some glass cast three for the ceiling top and some glass cast uh, 50 for the knots and the voids. Uh, that sounds great. To be honest, those small knots and voids that I can see, you could just get away with glass cast three on all of it because it's not going to be a massively deep pour unless you're doing a big, big area. I used to use glass cast three all the time for knots and voids because originally there was no glass cast 50. I did on one of my first tables, I poured the first 50, but before I did that, there was only glass cast which is actually glass cast three. So you will get away with that, but buy both and have a play around. Okay, next up is Harvey O'Brien. Uh, this looks lovely, Harvey. Um, he's done a hall table with some drawers. Um, it's um, American Black Warner and Tiger Maple drawer fronts. Um, he's done angled drawers. They're gonna be flush cut to the face eventually, and he's gonna have a book match veneered top. Wait for it, he is 17. So there is absolutely so many young people out there getting into woodwork and it just makes me feel so glad about it. I mean, there's a, obviously a lot of hours um, gone into this um, for that guy and he's not sitting on an Xbox or whatever, or an iPad, so that's awesome. Absolutely brilliant. Um, when you get it finished, send me a picture at some point and I'll try and get it up for you, it's awesome. There's a YouTube channel linked below as well for him. Goes on to say, love your videos, been watching your channel for a good while, your work never ceases to amaze me. Well, your work amazes me then, mate. It absolutely looks wicked. Okay, next up is from Dennis. He's made a children's carousel. Um, he's from Washington, USA, Longview. Um, it is six inches tall, eight inches round. He's used a little lazy Susan base, three inches, so that it moves. He does have a YouTube channel, so of course, I'm gonna link it on the screen here if you wanna see what he's done. Uh, love your channel, keep up the good videos. Well, you're absolutely welcome, Dennis. That looks very intricate. Good work, mate. Next up is from Peter. Um, he's a woodworker in his spare time, which he says he has lots of at the moment. He says he loves making stuff from recycled timber uh, found in junk collections. Uh, these are two small tables made for his daughter. They're made of Queensland black bean, uh, which I've not heard of, but he says it's a rare timber good for um, making furniture and cabinets. And this was actually found in a skip. They look really good. Yeah, really like them. That looks to me like very much like Sapili on the top, but um, like a mahogany. But anyway, absolutely lovely, Peter. Well done, mate. Okay, next up is from Alberto. He's made a Japanese-inspired uh, unit, which I think he says it's a sliding door on a credenza. Um, and it has like a rice paper uh, panel on there, which looks very impressive. You can see all those hand-cut dovetails. He's actually from Italy, and he's been on lockdown since the beginning of March. You're doing really good work. If this was done on lockdown, um, this looks absolutely brilliant. Really good. Nice one, Alberto. Okay, next up is from Carl. Uh, this looks amazing, Carl. Lovely place, I love Cornwall. So his whole family's moved to an old tidal mill um, and key in Cornwall, and they're using the old boat, boat house as a workshop, as a base, I guess, to restore the house, do some stonework and um, all restoring all the beams and the green oak. Looks like he's got loads of cool stuff there. He's just bought, um, he's a big fan of the channel. He's just bought some Tipman stuff, which is cool. You can see he's using epoxy to stabilize. He's using West System epoxy to stabilize some air dried beams. You can see he's got a nice Festool um, Rotex uh, 150. He's also sort of gone on to mention that he's looking into saw milling and maybe I should do it. I'm not sure if I'm gonna get into it. I've got a really good, other than this lockdown, I've got a really good saw mill. I used to do loads of sawing myself uh, with the chainsaw mill. In fact, loads of the planks before I moved here, I did all of them, took the trees down, slabbed them uh, and everything. But it's a lot of time and a lot of labor with a chainsaw mill. And if I buy a full-time mill, it still means I've got to stop, process it, move the logs. I just stick them on a trailer, drop them off at the sawmill, um, have a coffee with the guys. There might be some other good wood coming in so you get to know stuff going on, you're not so insular. Pay 80 to 100 pound a tree to have it planked and then bring it home stacked the next you know a few days later so for me it works out really well at the moment not having a mill although on lockdown i've got loads of trees piling up and i've got nowhere to take them um so that may be something um my kiln i was looking at the log of kiln but um i didn't want to use the uh, steam kiln my kiln's working really well and it does two processes which when i finally get the video done and have time to do it you'll see carl how i'm using it uh, over the coming months anyway Thanks for sharing these pictures, looks great. I'm quite envious of where you live. It looks wonderful. I love Cornwall, me and my family love going there. 
Okay, next one up is from Thomas. He's done a, got a couple of projects here. One that he's done in the last few days to tidy up small items in his shop. Um, and then the next one here, it looks really good by the way, Trey, really cool. It's a table he made a few years ago, but he's really French polished and sanded it. He said it was a curved um, project for his spindle molder. He's got a little 10 by 10 garden shed. He's also got an A341 hammer in the background as well. So it looks like he crams it all in, which is really cool. Nice work. So he's been a patron for Manorwood for a couple of years. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Um, and he did uh, some courses with John Lloyd um, about four years ago. And he's got an Instagram, which I put on the um, screen here. Would love to come and do the resin shop with yourself at some point in the future. Well, I will be doing that resin shop. I'm going to announce it um, as soon as this lockdown looks like we're coming somewhere near. I can organise that kind of thing. Next up is Richard Carter. He's off work at the moment, getting through some outstanding projects. We're all trying to do that, I think, at the moment. It's a good thing. Um, this is some wood left over, CLS left over, some stud work. He's done through mortars and tenons with dovetails. He says it's a bit overbuilt, but could hold an elephant. It looks really smart, really cool. Next up is Terry Johnson. He says, I think this is a great thing what you're doing, showcasing everyone's work on your channel. Um, well, you, you're welcome. I'm really pleased that we can do something, um, that I can do something during this lockdown anyway, to give a bit more of a community. Um, he goes on to say, which I tend to agree with, and I've been thinking about it. Um, we're always moaning about how little time we have, wish we had more time. So. I know it's difficult, it's difficult for all of us financially, um, but well, some of us it isn't, some of us it is more than others. Um, but using this time positively and to do something creative, all those times you're moaning, saying, oh, I've got no time to do this, wish I had the time. Now is one of the times that some of us do have the time. I really have been knocking down loads and loads of annoying things around my house, garden, workshop, you name it, uh, sorting out, um, tidying up. I've done so much that at least when I come out of this, I'm gonna have loads of jobs that I just keep nagging at me. They're all done. I have not stopped working. And it looks like what most of you are doing as well is turning that um, this time into something positive. So nice one, really well, uh, well done, Terry. And I tend to agree with you about making the most of this. Uh, next up is from Tom Ashton. I really like this, Tom. I love these vertical slats. Um, I've got a couple of ideas for my new outbuilding and some other stuff. I do love the slim vertical, um, very modern and, and elegant. This is recycled oak flooring. Uh, I think he says 106 hand cut joints, keeping him sane during this period. Um, yeah, I bet. And he says, uh, thanks for keeping up the content. He really keeps him going, watching it in the evenings. Um, he says he wishes he had some space for one of the upcoming projects I've got is a really big slab. I just need to get some time to edit the video and I'll bring that up uh, you know, really, really soon. So um, yeah, having the space for the big slabs is the problem and dealing with the big slabs is also the problem. Really well done, Tom. That looks really crisp. I love it. Next up is from Ashley. He says he's been watching my channel for a couple of months now. Every video has good content, helpful. Thank you. Well, you're welcome. Absolutely. Your stuff looks really good. Uh, it says here, just started getting into woodwork, made a couple of chopping boards, coat hangers, um, a little shelf, all looks really good. Bits of resin in the crack there. Looks like you've started in a really good way. It all looks really crisp and really well done. Nice one, well done, Ashley. Okay, last one, uh, Simon Stevens. He's renovated his late grandparents. Um, it's a bench table. It was warped and rotten, you can see there. He's replaced the top slats with some sapili. He bought from a scrap pile at his local uh, di um, timber merchants for £10, bargain. Um, it says it's his first hardwood project and it's come out better than he could possibly dream. It would take pride of place in his mother's garden alongside some other of his uh, late grandparents' treasures as soon as lockdown is over, which I don't know when that's going to be, um, but well done, mate, uh, keeping everyone positive. Okay, that's it for this video. Um, Thanks so much for sharing all your pictures again. I'll do one of these as soon as I can. I need to spend some time editing other videos of mine so that I can keep my content going. So I've got quite a lot to share with you as well. That's gonna be coming up soon. I hope you're all staying safe. I think the weather's gonna get a bit crap next week. So um, we can all get back in the workshop, lock down the hatches. So uh, see you later. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Special thanks to my patrons. You really are supporting me make these videos. I know I keep saying it. Um, and if you do like my videos, I always forget, but please hit the like button and subscribe because apparently it helps with Google uh, for YouTube. Thanks a lot. Um, I'll see you all on the next one.